To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 13, Abraham and Yahweh strike a deal. The essential character of the book of Genesis is the Hebrew patriarch Abraham, Avraham. His seed will produce all the Hebrews as well as other people in the area. In our previous episode about Avraham, we dove into his character and compared him to other people's patriarchs and founding fathers. In this episode, we'll break down what is essentially a family religion built on a pact between Avraham and the deity Yahweh and Elohim. The essentials of the deal are Avraham will do as he's told, and in return, Yahweh will make out of his genes a great people with kings and all. We'll explore that and go into the renegotiations, the voodoo, Abrahamic rituals, the haunted dreams, the cutting of the tip of the penis as an ultimate show of loyalty, and so on. We'll also discuss the promised land meme, a concept that has stayed relevant in human cultures and thinking throughout history. Let's dive in. Hi, Henri. Hi, Gil. Okay. The art of the deal. I think the first thing that comes to mind here is not only the that the episode starts with a, a very poetic and... A, musical uh, sounding uh, sentence lech lecha meartzecha go go uh, besides that the first thing that came to mind is that Abraham is old <laughs> and he has no heir and he has no children and uh, I think it's something that uh, is important here because it adds to the fact that it, it, he was probably a ficti- fictitious fictitious nah. uh, uh, character nah because uh, his entire origin story is non-existent basically yeah and if he's old 75 years old he should have had yes. children by now so he's a man with no past and with no future no future ah Doesn't here kids yeah and that is even more apparent when uh, you consider the yahweh's promise to make your seed yes so it, it's kind of a contrast between his bad luck, basically, because it's bad luck not to have children, mm. and uh, the, his promise to that his seed will succeed. So, so maybe it's a good deal for him because it's very dramatic. If you're 90 years old, you don't have a baby, and they tell you you will not only have a son, but your seed will create yeah. entire peoples. And Later, like, we will tell him, "Look at the sky. You see the sky? Same." <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see. Also, the sand. Yeah. So that's dramatic. The promised land here is more of uh, the future of the people that will come out of him i think here it uh, abraham as we said many times is a well-known father figure the fact here is to use him to uh, emphasize your own lineage and emphasize your own people and give credit to your own people inside of the area that you live in everybody knows that abraham but we come we are seed we are direct seed and direct uh, descendant of him and we are the fulfillment of the promise that was made to him by our god that yes. is this promised land uh, yes that's the deal basically yeah. we have a special deal that others don't <clears throat> have and so it starts when Av- avram abram lives somewhere else and go to the land that i will show you and he promises him this land yeah. So he has to leave his family, his life, everything yeah. in order to have a family. Yeah. You have to let go of the family that you had in order to have a family. And uh, that's a reoccurring theme here. Like when he separates from his brother Lot, then yeah. Yahweh comes in. So that's a very, very demanding deity. In order to have a family, you have to leave all your life yeah. behind. Yeah. That's how it starts. It's, it's like the start of the, of the chapter, Lech Lecha Go, it's dramatically and impact-wise, it's a little bit like, Bereshit bara Elohim et shamayim vet aretz. In the first day, God, God created uh, the land and the sky. Mm. It's just a very dramatic entrance, like something out of nothing. Like, yeah. boom. Yeah. It's a Here great it uh, opening sentence for a uh, for a story, wow. a suspenseful story. When I read it, my feeling was that the storytellers needed Abraham. <laughs> they needed his name 
so the promise was you go to where we we live now you know <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, you ah. build the uh, shrines to me uh, you build them it's Abraham that built them it's not a uh, you know a shrine that was for this God and later destroyed and now we say it's mm. the shrine no no Abraham built that that mm. Abraham you know Abraham the, the father of most of the people here around of the Mori of the Bekizi of the Blamori of blah, 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 blah. The, that's why I read it that's why maybe the dramatic part and when we reach that the miscellaneous stories uh, we'll make an episode of, about that the, when they, we reach the part that we actually made a dramatization out of the search for an heir that is when they decided to make that leaving my father's house as something dramatic because the entire scene is dramatic yes. here it's less dramatic it's, like, it's dramatic as the first uh, line in the Bible is dramatic, some kind of a, a showmanship of storytelling. Wow. Yeah. Like rising action in the first sentence. Exactly. It's like, uh, you know, Gregor Samsa woke up one day and he found yes. out that he's a cockroach. Yes. Something like an excellent yes. Uh, yes. opening yes. phrase. Yesterday, mother died. Yeah. <laughs> or was it the day before? I don't know. That was the, yes. the, yeah, the, the stranger. So here there are two very dramatic uh, uh, movements go just like living where you are going to a place you know beyond the desert yeah beyond the hills somewhere where everything will be great this is this way of thinking has yeah. been a part of our psyche yeah for three thousand years maybe more before that i don't know but it's, it still lives today yeah it's the meme of the promised land as you said uh to me, it doesn't, uh, as uh, we like to, sh- to say here, it doesn't really shout from the text. <laughs> <laughs> the term promised land not, is not necessarily appears as a term promised land. It maybe is in the subtext of Yahweh's promise to Abraham. Yes. In terms of when you imagine a better place, this kind of a meme of the promised land, not just it's promised land because it was promised to me, mm. promised land in the sense of it is a better place, a land filled with milk and honey. It it appears a bit later. It's it's more connected to the promised land of the Jew, Jewish slaves in Egypt. But here, even in this deal, there's a clear editing job. <laughs> also, as we like to say here, mm. when they uh, retroactively uh, in the scene in the voodoo scene that we'll reach uh, maybe now, yeah. uh, God says, "Oh, but remember that." <coughs> your seed will spend some time yes. as a slave yes in a, in a foreign land yeah in a forereign land we i will punish that foreign land don't yes. worry but you will they will be slaves there <laughs> it's a clear uh, editing <laughs> <laughs> okay so before we reach the voodoo scene let's talk about the fact that this is a family religion yeah it's more of a k- clannish religion yes because there's a, a uh, there's an emphasis to describe uh, there's a will to describe uh, the cattle and the, the his, material possessions his posse <laughs> his posse <laughs> his entourage <laughs> his jama jama in, in Arabic you say jama uh, or gma if, if you're, you're from Egyptian Egypt. ah. <laughs> 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 very nice <laughs> We're talking about the, the clannish religion because yeah. it's not a universal uh, religion. Like it applies to Lot, not because Lot is a good person. Actually, it puts Lot in Sodom where bad yeah. things are happening. But Yahweh will still take care of Lot yeah, yeah. for Abraham. I think I have two series uh, about uh, why Lot. Why Lot? What the fuck, Lot? Uh, I think that it's some kind of an ancient storytelling trope. Uh, that you have to have some kind of a brother uh, and maybe even Lot was I think even we'll, the Bible says it itself we will reach that when we reach uh, later stories in the, the Abraham but Lot is also a founding father oh, some people trace yes. their line into Lot yes so it's like uh, lesser people uh? lesser people lesser people so if you tell the story of Abraham Lot is his brother you know Lot and he's, uh, you know, he's the lesser brother. I always imagined it like uh, Mario and Luigi. He's like uh, uh, Nintendo tried to, the, the Japanese uh, marketing uh, execs uh, 
and uh, game designers tried to imagine uh, an Italian American plumber okay. and then uh, to make a more, little bit more variety in the in the plain style and to, to, to make it more interesting they added another character character his brother which is the same only green, green. <laughs> later they <laughs> spend more time to make him a little bit taller and, and, and uh. but it's like the Mario less the lesser Mario is the green Mario yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> that's why so that's, that's how lot. I imagine a lot that's a lot okay uh, one last thing with the lech lecha go 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 you go whatever go thy go thyself yeah, it, like. it's like in Latin uh, languages you have like in French you have me mm-hmm. and a verb like something yeah. you like yeah. you wake up yeah. you it's a passive a verb I don't know how it's called submissive in, in the <laughs> yeah now here maybe when you're listening to the story he's no longer uh, the prime minister of uh, Israel Benjamin Netanyahu there's no ala lech Okay, no jinxing. <laughs> no jinxing. Prime Minister for life. There has been uh, protests uh, against him and the slogan is Lech, go. Yeah. And just like you just, even without thinking about it, it just seems uh, something that you know. Yeah. Lech, Lech, Lecha. Yeah. Because it's super iconic in yeah. uh, Jewish uh, thinking. Yeah. It's still prominent even in, uh, not, I won't say day-to-day life language, but it's not a... Uh, out of the ordinary to hear Lech Lecha. And, okay. uh, and everybody knows it. You don't have to even know your Bible really well here. Just like it's, uh, everybody knows. Okay, you want to go to the voodoo shit? How does Abraham worship Yahweh? What does it mean to, to follow the way of Yahweh? First, let's say what it is. It, uh, Yahweh tells Abraham to take either to take three she lambs, three rams and three goats. Goats. Either that or, from what I understand, the word for uh, three lambs or three uh, rams is meshuleshet. Yeah, that's what it says. It's yeah. like third or something. It, yeah, it's not the proper word to describe numbers. So it's kind of dis- disputed. It's, it can well be uh, a three-year-old lamb, yeah. three-year-old ram, and whatever. Yeah. Not important. <laughs> you need to cut them. In the middle. In the middle. Uh, so they got their guts will spill and separate them yeah. and walk between them. Walk between the pieces. That's yes. the covenant of the pieces. Yes. But in Hebrew, it's a lot more gory. A brit ben abtarim. Yeah. It's an, an alliance of uh, slashes. <laughs> slashes. And also brit batarim. Brit batarim. Uh, yeah. It's also nice. It's with the, the, the same letters, just like rearranged yeah. differently. Maybe there is a, even a, some kind of a epitomological or whatever how you say that word uh, origins genealogy to the word alliance brit brit ah, maybe it's something that you better. cut your yeah your, finger blood finger whatever blood and shake hand yeah mm, nice to get yeah. the entire episode and all our content look for a podcast of biblical proportions on all podcasting platforms